Just fame of almost fame, and I am here with Mike Spritzer of Devil Driver. What's going on, Mike? What's up? All right, like we just said, you're not feeling so well. <laughs> Pretty much better today, but I, I sound worse than I am. Coming off the 70,000 tons, tons of metal. Yes, yes. And you guys played on that? Yeah, two shows. Two shows on there. How was that for you? It was awesome. Yeah, that's was that kind of like your kickoff of this tour that you're on now? Yeah, I kind of wish we had a few more days off in between to, to heal, but unfortunately, yeah. we had one day off, and then we started off the tour and the uh, observatory in Santa Ana. And it went well so far. Yeah. Everything went great, yeah. of course. And you guys came out with Trust No One last year. Yep. And this record, I think for you, especially with John being gone, I'm assuming that you're writing and contributing a lot more with all of that. Is yeah, that right? I wrote about 60, 70% of it, but um, I was a little hesitant at first to let Neil and Austin write, but it took about a day after hanging out with the guys. And um, I pretty much started welcoming I mean, their uh, material into a daybreak the first single was mostly written by Neil wow and so what's that like for you to kind of take the reins on something like that it's something I've always wanted to do John and I it's no secret that he and I didn't really see eye to eye when it came to music we always made it work but it was a little bit of a struggle and so I was more than happy to just go in and write most of the record on my own right and what was that like for you working with Dez and everybody else and you kind of taking that next step up? I never really get together with Dez and work on a record. He sends me, I, I send him the songs, you know, just throw it in Dropbox, have him listen to it. And then he sends me ideas of him just kind of playing the music in the background and whispering lyrics into his phone. And I'll make kind of suggestions from there. But when he was doing lyrics for this last one, I was in Australia. Oh. So I had already planned a vacation there to go surfing, and he blew out his voice, and I think on the second or third day of recording, so we had to push things back. And by that time, I was in Australia, and I was like, well, make sure it's good. <laughs> Just make sure I'm it's going good. surfing. <laughs> what is it like for you when you're having, because you've been in Devil Driver now for, what, 13 years, something in like April, that? In April, will be 13 years. Okay. So being a part of a band and now taking more reins, more, more, wearing more hats, I guess you'd say, mm -hmm. like in the band, and you've had a lot of members change throughout the years. What has been your favorite thing now with the lineup that you have now, and how do you think that affects your band when you're changing the members? It's got a fresh atmosphere to it. All the other guys, I mean, we've known each other since, you know, uh, I would, well, for me, I knew all those guys since I was 18. I met them all in Santa Barbara when we were in college together. And it's, I think the urge for some of them to keep doing what we were doing went away. Right. And they didn't have the same passion that me and Des do for it. Jeff, I don't think, is going to be doing, um, I think he's done with the music scene. He just didn't want to tour anymore. And Berkland's got his own band going uh, called I Have Tongues that mm -hmm. I think uh, the world will probably hear this year. And uh, so he's still into music yeah, and oh, bl believe it or not John and I are closer now than we were when we were in a band together. you know what I do believe it actually sometimes you need that distance to become closer yeah so that's really cool and John's a great guy so I he is a look great forward guy. to I what he has dude. to do uh, yeah. in the future I'm looking forward to see what I've heard it it's awesome oh well then there you go you hearing it here yeah. first <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> um, when you are guys out and you're out touring Everybody thinks it's a big party. They think, you know, okay, everybody's out partying every night and doing everything. But there's a lot of downtime. What's your favorite thing to do in your downtime? Uh, well, watch a lot of TV shows or write music on my computer. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So pretty easy. What I try to read, but I'm not much of a reader. What about you, you as a band? What do you guys do as a band together? Food. <laughs> a lot of food. But uh, a lot of food and a lot of coffee. That's really that all of it. Yeah, all coffee. Of it. Coffee to keep everything I mean, going. If we're in a place where, you know, we've had some really cool days off. Like um, many years ago, we had a day off in Panama City and we ended up going jet skiing all day. And That's pretty fun. So it kind of <laughs> depends on where you are. We had right. a day off in France and we were on paddle boats at this little tiny lake and just, you know. It really depends on where you are. Sometimes yeah. you're in the middle of nowhere and there is nothing to do. Right, right. So if Those are the nights that you get really drunk. If there's some, <laughs> no, actually, I really don't drink on my days off. I, re I hardly ever do. It would have to be, you know, there have been times where we've had a day off and we've been in a city where a friend's band is playing. Right, and right. And I might make the exception yeah. and have a drink or two on a day off. But usually on a day off, I... Is in, in chill mode. Yeah, I don't blame you. You just want that relaxation for the moment that you can yeah. get it, right? Yes. 
Um, so you guys did your first tour for this album last year, like the first leg of this tour, I guess you would. Well, say. we were opening up for Hatebreed. Okay, okay. Uh, what was your favorite city to tour in when you guys went there? When With you were Hatebreed? Yeah. Oh God, we we didn't do any cities. I don't think we hadn't done a million times. So that's kind of hard to say. But you always have a favorite. Uh, Toronto's always one of my favorites in North America. Uh, Montreal. Actually, you know what? Montreal, that was a fun day. Tell it, had, it had been a while. I can't. I'm, I'm not a liberty. Okay. It was that good. <laughs> we'll get it off the record eventually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like to play a game sometimes. It's called Famous Five. You down to play? Sure. All right. So I know you surf and I know you like the water. Mm -hmm. What if... This is question one. What if you got stranded on an island? What would be the one thing you would want to bring with you? For survival or for fun? That's up to you. Oh, God. I guess a pocket knife or something like that so I could survive. After that would be a surfboard, of course. Okay. There's got to be some ways out there if I'm on an island. All right. Fair enough. Well, what if there wasn't? You'd just be stuck, stuck there, I guess. I guess your, I would be stuck knife. there. But, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Pocket knife's a good answer, though. That's a good one. Like a Swiss Army knife. Something like Could that. Could have all the tools. Yeah. Got it. All right. Question two. What's your favorite time of day? The mornings. Really? Yeah. Uh, I love, I don't really wake up. Well, no, I, I do wake up pretty early. A fair amount when I'm at home. On tour is a different story. But I do like waking up early when everyone else is still asleep. And that's usually, you know, I get up early to go surfing when I'm at home. Right. But it just, everything seems fresher and cleaner and more quiet and chill and it's just kind of like a brand new day it's awesome you know i like that answer all right number three if you could be any animal what animal would you be oh a dog oh. without a doubt i love dogs i hope i'm a dog in my next <laughs> life that's loved by an awesome family <laughs> what would you want your name to be this is just a side question this is like question three part that's a. my guitar tech what's my name if i'm a dog come on aaron you're on camera <laughs> you go. So you be no the dog, no the dog. My guitar, <laughs> my my guitar tech Aaron's not in the most creative headspace right now. <laughs> that was the best you got. <laughs> is that what is that what you wish you could say to him now well, all the time? Fuck face most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that would really be his dog's name, <laughs> Fuckface. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, number four, who is the closest person to you? Oh, that's that's closest person to me. I don't really let people in that close to me most of the time. Not lately either. Uh, closest person to me. That's a really hard question for me. Sometimes I have hard questions. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I got a lot of good. All the people in my band and crew are probably on an even keel, you know. So they all kind of, they're kind of grouped together in one right. awesome mass of people. But it's fun. There's really nobody right now. Wow. Yeah. All right. All right. Fair enough. And number five, a famous five, and you kind of actually already answered it. I was going to say, if you're back on the island and you have your one thing, which is your pocket knife, what would be your second thing? My second thing? My surfboard, your I surfboard. guess. Your surfboard. All right. Thank you for playing Famous Five. No that problem. That was cool. All right. Back to, back to the other random questions for you. Um, when you are getting ready for mm -hmm. a show, aside from doing interviews with people like me, what's your ritual? What do you do? I usually like to get a guitar in my hand at least an hour before and... Uh, get the hands going I like to have a couple of drinks before I go on when I'm not sick and that's pretty much it stretch loosen and up everything in a way yeah <laughs> and uh, just try to get the blood in, in my hands going again it, it really it also kind of depends on the set that we're playing the set that we're playing right now isn't terribly difficult for me and um, do you think that's because it had a lot to do with you writing most of it and being a bigger no, part of it. Like we're, tr we're, gonna tr we're trying to add in the song Trust No One into the, to this uh, touring cycle with, with Des being sick, with me being sick, and the song just being an utter pain in the ass to play. <laughs> like We haven't added it in yet, but uh, 
once we start adding that in, I'm going to have to probably warm up maybe two hours before the show to play that one because it's, it's kind of tricky. Yeah. What would you, what would be your advice to people on that? Because I think there's a lot of people, they just go right in and they think they can just go. And I think it play. depends on what kind of band you're in. I mean, if you're in a band that's, you know, just plays a lot of power chords and strumming, you, right. know, you don't really need to warm up and I don't care who you are, you know, some of the stuff the devil driver has is stupidly simple and some of it is pretty damn difficult some of the stuff i'll always struggle with for the rest of my life to be able to play so it depends you know like when we're when we play dead to rights that's something i have to warm up for a lot more or um i I don't know but you know some of the older songs off the first record like nothing's wrong and i could care less you know i could do those blindfolded hanging upside down it's no problem you're like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> Put it but on the so, list. Sometimes <laughs> I think about, uh, I heard Des say one time that Ronnie, uh, Ronnie James Dio said that you either you have it or you don't. Right. And so that's what I say to myself when I, I get lazy and I don't warm up. I'm like, you got this. Yeah. You know, just, let's just go out there and play fucking pressure. play it. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think it's kind of a mental thing sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. We all get those mental blocks where you're like, oh mm-hmm. man, I don't know if I can handle this right now. But you're like, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. What are, um, who are your influences? What made you get into playing? Uh, the first major influence when I was a kid was Def Leppard, the, the Hysteria record. Uh, and then it morphed into Metallica, Megadeth, and Pantera. Then it morphed into Marilyn Manson, and I started really getting into industrial music when I was about 15 years old and, like, the whole goth scene. Right, right. And uh, then uh, Rammstein, there's um, a band from Toronto called The Birthday Massacre that I absolutely fell in love with when I was maybe in my early 20s. And uh, these days, my favorite band is probably Gojira. Oh, love Gojira. Love Gojira. They're up for uh, Grammy, too. Well, they should be. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think Metallica's going to win. Well, you never know politics. Uh, I mean, yeah, well. it'd be nice to see Gojira take it, though. I think they're, I think they're an incredible band. So I don't think they will because of the way they, the people that vote for it. Everyone's heard of Metallica. That's not going right. to be even a metal hit, right? You know, and then they're going to go Gojira. Who's this? Ah, check the box that says Metallica. You know, just because that's who Metallica yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't the worst person or right, worst right, band exactly. to pick for the Grammy, but it's like, yeah, they've what already got a couple of those. Album? I haven't listened to it yet. Oh, really? No, I keep oh. forgetting. Oh, you should get on that. I it's know. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And that's what I keep hearing. The only because, seriously, I was at a point for a while where I was like, oh, Metallica. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think I, we all I were. I think they brought it back, though, to, uh, you know, they're not, it's not quite like their original stuff, obviously, but they went back to kind of push themselves forward. I from think. what I've heard from it, it's, probably the best thing i've heard since the black album yeah i would probably agree with you on that one definitely because load and re- no definitely not didn't no yeah never mind that's nothing here nor there um well <laughs> again we kind of already answered this but my qu- i had a question for you because your new album called trust no one mm-hmm. i was wondering well i didn't write the lyrics that's, right, that's, a, right. that's a des question well, I just wanted to ask you, though, who do you trust or do you trust no one? I trust my family. I got a close right. relationship with my family. All right. I, I uh, definitely trust my mom, my dad, and I got two brothers and a sister. And, uh, you know, people make fun of us because we get along so well. You know, it's like, you guys are weird. He's just like, we never fight. Ever. Did, did you guys have a relationship growing up where you had dinner together every night and did all that stuff? Uh, kind of. I was the youngest of four kids, and I think they did that more in the beginning, and then it kind of teetered out. Like, you know, one kid left for college, and then the second kid left for college, and then there's just me and my brother, and we were kind of little terrorizers <laughs> compared to it. Like, the, my oldest brother was valedictorian, and they were all straight A's, and then they waited 10 years and had me and my brother, and we were kind of They're like, let's the, do the this The bad <laughs> kids, yeah. And they were, I, no joke, my parents stopped having kids because of me. They were going to have one or two more. And uh, I was such a horrible baby. They were like, we're, we're done. We're not having any more kids. Well, and I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> you should be a little yeah. bit, I think. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so what would you do if you were not in Devil Driver? What would you be doing? I'd probably... Um, I would have probably been some kind of athlete in uh as far as like skateboarding or surfing or wakeboarding or kiteboarding you would have put all your energy yeah i probably would have done that um but i mean careers like that really don't last very long it's even it's even harder to do than 
being a musician. Yeah. But other than that, my dad owns a hardware store. I'd probably take that over. Gotcha. Which I probably still will one day. One day. Yeah. And you'll probably just add in some hardware for music. Right. Stuff in there. I'll, gonna... have an, I'll have a guitar yeah. somewhere <laughs> in there. That's awesome. Um, so your, the last album before Trust No One, it took two years for Trust No One to come out. How much longer until another album? Have you guys already started writing? That's you kind of a things? secret. We actually got oh. something in the works right now. And, but that's all I'm going to say. All right. Something but it's not work. it's not a new record, but oh. it's something. It's something. It's a little something. a little in between. Yeah. A little in between. I mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. All right. But we are gonna start I actually I have started working on new songs already. Oh, okay. Yeah. With the band for Devil Driver. Not yeah, for yeah, Devil yeah. Driver, but not together with the band. I know okay. Neil's written a bunch. He's got a bunch of songs and I started one or two. Let me ask you really quick, going back to um writing and recording and all of that, when you you know, we're doing a bulk of the writing and then you had Neil and Austin coming in and you guys were all writing. Uh, you know, you said you let them kind of, you welcomed them to mm-hmm. write as well. How do you kind of pick which songs you want to put on this album or do you kind of go, well, let's wait and maybe that'll fit onto the next one. Like, how do you decide without kind of stepping on toes or making fe- people? Well, that's one of the things I li- love about Neil too is he, and same with Austin, is he's just this ult- ultimate professional when it comes to that he doesn't let himself get offended and you know when I say I don't like something and we have a really good relationship where I for some reason I don't get offended when he says he doesn't like something right he's brutally honest about it like nah don't like it you know and uh but it kind of comes down to a democracy at at the end you know we'll see what songs we have and we'll take it from there like all right if four out of five people don't like this one song, obviously that one's yeah. getting stuck to the back. But we, it's actually kind of an easy process it, for us. It's especially on Trust No One. It was, you know, more or less on this record, kind of left up to me and Dez. I think the other guys were like, eh, well, we're new, so we're just going to let the guys that have been doing the band for the longest kind of make the big decisions. Right. But you know, I welcomed Neil's and Austin's feedback 100%, you know, and like which songs we were going to do and which ones we weren't. And uh, it, it was a pretty easy process. I mean, we went, I think we, we recorded, I think, 12 or 13 songs. And one, there was one song that was had a working title called R2D2 that didn't make the record. And Des never even did vocals for it. And I actually thought it was a pretty cool song. But that one never saw the light of day, but we recorded it. So oh, okay. there's an instrumental of it. And on Mark Lewis's hard drive somewhere, our producer. Maybe that'll be like a, the, the secret song of the next album. Or Maybe. Something. I wouldn't mind releasing it. They don't have it. secret songs anymore. Remember, it, a lot of CDs used to have that back in the day, a lot of albums. Yeah, and I found yeah. out recently they had secret songs that, at the beginning of records, too. What? How yeah, you, you would, even you do would that? hit play, and then you would have to hit rewind, and it would be on the negative. Oh. Which I never knew. There's a whole Wikipedia page with a list of all the bands that did that on CDs. You just taught me something new right now, and I'm yeah. sure a lot of people. I just found just this out about out too. maybe two months ago. Wow, yeah. that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to go check that out. All right, well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you got a at least an hour to warm up here. Yeah. I want you to feel good, but I really appreciate you taking the time. And You're welcome. Coming on and chatting with me. No problem. Thank you to Michael Spritzer of Devil Driver. You've been watching Almost Famous. <laughs> Please hang up and try again.